Right now in downtown St. Catharines, it's 19 degrees. I'm Lewis Budko. News next at 1 o'clock. It's 12.07 on a Sunday afternoon, so you know there's only one place you need to be. It's the Jim Fannin Show, and it starts now on News Talk 610 CKTV. This is the Jim Fannin Show on Niagara's News Talk 610. Call now, 905-688-2582, 1-877-610-2582, or text us at 610-10. Nice drugs have totally worn off. Not a very appropriate bumper music. It's just the theme of the show. Welcome to the Jim Fannin Show. Every Sunday, right here at noon, from the White House of Rock, Talk, and Schlock. Happy Mother's Day to you. It's 12.08 on a beautiful spring day. It's May 11th. Time stamp it. We have a great show for you today. Carrie Porter will come up in the first segment. That's the next segment. She's going to talk about the Garden City Co-op. She is in studio with me. Normally I say you take your calls, but good interviews don't require callers. You know that. So we're heavily stacked with interviews again today. I do promise to get back to the full hour, two hours of just straight up political nonsense and talk and calls. We have been so heavy with interviews the last few weeks, and I feel like I'm way behind on my... BS, (laughs) BS, <laughs> my politics. <laughs> so I promise we'll get back to that in the coming weeks. Maybe next week we'll give you a full hour of politics. Gail Haynes comes up at 1230. Lemonade Stand Millionaire. How to talk to your children about money. That's going to be an interesting conversation. She's going to call in by phone. And then the last segment is always reserved for the rock stars that are in the booth today. Drew Comerford's in all month. Phone slap. (laughs) He'll take your calls. He's supposed to be screening your calls, but you pretty much, you call, you get on. Drew does more than just answer the phones. He runs the bumpers. He keeps the bands tight. He's got everyone mic'd up in the booth over there. And my niece, Brooke Elizabeth Ann Smiley, is my associate assistant producer today, bought Comerford his breakfast today. Oh, and the pained look on her face when she departed with that 20 bucks. Bought me breakfast, bought herself breakfast, and Drew Comerford lucked out. Sorry, Butko. I always forget the news guy. Like, how many lunches to breakfasts do I got to bring in? Shouldn't have said anything. Louis Butko doing the news today. In the house as well. And a tradition that we started on the Jim Fannin show weeks ago. Gail D. with Duly Noted are the rock stars. They're wired for sound. They're ready to bump us out of this segment and come back for other segments. In and out today, we've got live music with Gail D. and Duly Noted. Happy Mother's Day, Gail. She's got a couple gigs coming up. She's got a gig after we're done today. These guys are dressed in suits and ties and dresses. they They look like they're going to the symphony. I said, this is radio, guys. Oh, we've seen your YouTube videos. (laughs) The YouTube videos will be up and running. You can see them on the show. Brock, you want to grab my phone and get over there so you can... Jeez. Getting a 16-year-old motivated is not easy. So, today we're stacked. And like I said, we will get back to your calls. And politics next week. Looks like Jenny Stevens is going to get the nod for the NDP here. Two city councilors going up to face Jim Bradley. And you know what? For the first time, I think Bradley's beatable in this riding after 37 years. Is it okay to vote? Well, I'm not voting conservative. I'll vote green. And, oh, by the way, the Greens are looking for a candidate. You know, if they're calling me, they're pretty desperate, right? I am not running. But September 11th, I might have a nice announcement for you. Just to tease that up. I'm not running for the GPO, the Green Party of Ontario. I love my radio show, and I don't care if it's 45 days just to take off. 
once the writ is dropped or once I announce a campaign and I'm an official candidate, i got to stop doing my show. So that's not happening. It might happen in September, though. <laughs> I'll give you the numbers, 905-688-2582. If you do have a question for any of the guests, you can get in. I will ask that you just keep your questions when the guests are on for the guests. one 610 cktb is your toll-free number. Pound 610. On the Bell Mobility Network is a free call. And always the most efficient way to get your host is the text 61010. Now this affectionate stage name is Gail D. Gail Davidson. Jim Slominski. I got it. Slominski and Aaron... Zukowicz. They're really, really putting the test to me. That's not Petrowski. Andy. Hello. Are you on? You're on. You're live. How well, you doing? I'm good. What do you got? Quickly on the way out. We're already into the bumper. Hit it. Yeah, Jim. First of all, happy Mother's Day to all the awesome mothers out there in Niagara. Moms are a gift of God. Use this chance to connect with your mom. And if you're estranged in any way reconnect send an email you know i'm glad you said that andy that's so cool you know what i my mother's not on this side of the the grass anymore mine you, either jim and you know what i'm so grateful that i died with no regrets nothing left to say with my mother and I, you know you couldn't have said it better if you've estranged bust off a call to your mom right right and you know what taking my mother-in-law to the tea room in port Dalhousie. what an awesome day down here jim just Go and hug your mom. Tell her you love her no matter what's behind you. Put it in front of you, my friend. Feel good, Petrowski. We're going to call you from now on, Andy. Thanks for the call. I appreciate it, brother. Thanks, Jim. All right. Peace out. Call in with your uh, Mother's Day wishes. All show. We'll squeeze you in. Okay. Gail D. and Dooley noted. All show. But coming up next, we're going to talk local food. The Garden City Co the, the Garden City Food Co op. I always forget the food part of it. Carrie Porter's in studio. I'm cranked about this interview. It's a tight segment. We're gonna get as much information out of Carrie Porter as we can regarding the Garden City Food Co op, and I'll make my lips work properly when we get back after this break. Stay tuned. See the sky. You and I. This is the Jim Fannin Show on Niagara's News Talk 610. Call now, 905-688-2582, 1-877-610-2582, or text us at 610-10. Emily, Emily, Emily has the murmuring sound of me all oh. I'm Jim Fannin. I should just let this run, eh, Drew? What a voice. Gail D. and Julie Noted playing live bumpers today. Drew Comerford's running the board. We're live here every Sunday. Carrie Porter is my guest. She is with the Garden City Food Co-op. Carrie, I really appreciate the time. Happy Mother's Day. Oh, thanks so much. I know so you're much. a mother as well. Yes, I am. So congratulations and happy Mother's Day. We need to... Uh, more great mothers in town like this. Now, you're a transplant. You're not even from town. Tell us a little bit about yourself, where you're from, and why did you make such a great city like St. Catharines your home? I'm from Cape Breton, Nova Scotia. 
Uh, my mom is from Thorold, so my dad moved. Oh, sorry to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> I say that to everyone from Thorold. <laughs> oh, so she, uh, my dad moved here when he was 17, met my mom, okay. and he missed Nova Scotia. They had my brothers here, and then they moved back uh, to Cape Breton. And I'm adopted, so they adopted me. Uh, my birth family, I, I met them, and they're also from Cape Breton. Wow. So I grew up there, and then in about t- 1998... We had moved back and forth a couple of times for economic reasons. My parents had a business uh, that went bankrupt during the uh, economic crisis in 1990. So we moved back to Thorold for two years. So poor me. I lived in Thorold for a couple (laughs) of years. Then we moved back uh, because we missed it. We really love Cape Breton. Uh, I went to university. I went to a French university on the other side of Nova Scotia down on the South Shore. And then my parents moved back up again. Um, cause my brothers are here now. So I have aunts and uncles and my two brothers live here. Um, the first time I lived here, I didn't really like it. And I said, I'd never come back. And, but here I am, I've lived here since 1998. Um, I really love it here now. I think great things are happening in the region and I'm not leaving. So. And definitely great things are happening, but what a contrast, you know, from where you come from and where you are now. Speak to me a little bit about what it is about St. Catherine specifically that made you stay and said, no, no, I'm, you you know, I'd, I don't miss home so much now. You always miss home. It doesn't matter where you come from. I found a really great community downtown. It took a little while. I found people in the arts community. I found some people in uh, politics uh, that I had. Uh, you know, we That's had the same to kind do. of anywhere. It doesn't matter where you live, politicians. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Cool. I've uh, I've been known to be out on the street protesting things here and there. So I really? found a group of a little activism in your blood. A little bit of activism in my blood. Um, I was on the board of the Niagara Artist Center for a long time. I was on the board of another theater company. That's a great um, community too. Yeah. Back, yep. And my husband's been involved in the arts. He works at Brock in neuroscience, but he has an art degree mm. um, and he paints. So he had a studio downtown at one point. So we found this group of people. Um, like-minded people. Downtown is a great little community. I worked downtown for about five years in real estate with uh, broker Brad Sheehan that used to be at Internet uh, Realty. And I loved it downtown. I ran my last green party in 08 from a downtown, which is now Christina's, 52 St. Paul Street. Oh, yeah. Uh, just a, such a great feel. So I was on Queen Street. My St. Paul Street office was over there, and then Mansion House was my other office. I had this beautiful triangle. And, you know, living not far from downtown, being able to walk to the clubs, and, and down, and, you know, I come downstairs at lunch, you walk out, and you can eat any, like, at any place in the world, food wise, and great food. So I really appreciate the downtown community. Yes. Tell me a little bit about the Garden City Food Co op and why do we need, well, we know we need a grocery store downtown. Yes. So I envision the co op is kind of like a farmer market, but it's not that at all. It's more like a supermarket, correct? Yes. It's more like a grocery store. So we lost the A&P in 2004. Oh, it was, that was, yeah, Midtown Plaza, Midtown which is, Plaza. I guess you could call that downtown, but not downtown core proper, but yeah. th- yeah, still a lot of people downtown used it. A lot of people downtown used it. Uh, years ago, we had a lot of grocery stores downtown. There was Loblaws on on Queen Street, you know, where the old Beatty's Basics is? Right. That was a grocery store. Really? I yeah. yeah. So there were lots of places to buy food way back when. There was also stores like Coy Brothers um, downtown. So that's, you know, that's slowly been going away, moving out to the suburbs. Mm-hmm. But there's a real turn and a change to downtown revitalization, um, especially with oil prices going up. Um, it sort of makes sense to focus back into the core uh, and have more people living downtown and not traveling so far. So when that AMP closed in 2004, I didn't really notice. I was working in Burlington and commuting uh, for five years, which is, you know, I liked my job, but it was kind of a horrible existence to drive like that. And then right. when I had kids... Um, I wanted to walk more and I wanted to walk downtown and buy my groceries and I really couldn't. Mm. And I couldn't buy diapers in the downtown core of the city, which seemed insane to me. So around this time, a group of people got together. They started meeting at Silver Spire Church, talking about the fact that what do people do? Where do they buy fresh food downtown? Uh, Is there something we can do? And these folks started talking about a grocery bus and different ideas and then they arrived at the idea of a co-op. So I came in a little bit later. In Glace Bay, we had co- a co-op, a grocery co-op, and I used to shop there. It was a conventional grocery store. There were lots of them in Nova Scotia, New Brunswick. So the idea wasn't foreign to me, and then I got involved in the in the project. So. Now, what's your official title with the co-op? I'm the project manager. Okay, and you guys are looking for a location, obviously, downtown now? Yes. When are you going to have that sewn up? Uh 
we hope to have it sewn up by about uh, the summer or the fall. We okay. have to reach a certain goals before we sign a lease and spend any money okay. uh, on leasehold improvements. So sure. we're taking, we've got an approach that's in stages. Okay. So we need 300 members and then we will launch an investment campaign. How many do you have now? We're close to 200. Wow. So that's pretty so good. So 200 people already, maybe not even downtown people, have bought into the concept of... Yes. Now, tell me how this works. How is it different than a local grocery store like your Loblaws or your Zares or what have you? How's the co-op work? So you buy a membership, then you get yes. lower prices than the public? Because the public can still go to the co-op, right? Yeah, there are different models. You can set it up so that it's a it's an exclusive store, but our store will be open. Right, good. Um, so To everybody. But members will get uh, a dividend, a patronage dividend. Um, when so it's a non-profit from the sense that you, any prob- profit you make is, is spread out in dividends to the owners. Well, the thing, you can have a not-for-profit co-op or a for-profit co-op. We decided to be a for-profit co-op, which means it just determines how you uh, spend the, the surplus of the profits in okay. the store. So the members get to choose... You know, they elect a board of directors and they Mm -hmm. will choose what to do with the surplus. So if the co-op is very profitable, they might decide to put some of it into a reserve um, or it will go into patronage returns. There will also be member discounts in the store. So there will be other incentives um, to being a member of the co-op. You'll get How how would it be different from the standpoint? Like, are we going to have more local food than we would at an A&P or a Zares? Yes. Uh, We did a market study a couple of years ago and we asked people what, what do you want to see in the store? If we open a store downtown that was a co-op, uh, what what is missing from your current shopping experience? And 70% of the people said, I can't get local food in my grocery store, and that's what no, I even want. when strawberries are in season, we're still buying them from California. Yeah, and that's a problem. And they taste like garbage, like cardboard. Yes, they do. <laughs> Compared so, to ours. I mean, we must have the best strawberries in the world. I think we do. And, you know, farmers market sales are growing year over year. There's a real focus towards... Uh, local food now that that sector is growing so there is an opportunity for us to provide something that people want in the downtown core and the store will be a reflection of who we are in this region and what we grow nice yeah so nice. it's it's an exciting project i i love my job this is the best job how cool is it to be able to wake up in the morning and go yes thank you god yes <laughs> well it's a it's a it's a group that sits around and tries to solve problems it's a an organization that's you know it's problem solving is at our core democracy is at our core uh and it's wonderful we work with a great group of people we've got a board and we've got six committees and there are so many people informing this co-op uh and it's wonderful Great. I really appreciate your time. We could probably spend an, a whole hour talking about this, but just on the way out, can you tell us how we get a hold of you? How do how much is a membership and how do we uh, get a hold of you to buy one? Our website is www.gardencityfoodcoop.ca. You can buy online. Oh, beautiful. It, it's a one-time share of $120, so it's not wow, a yearly. It's cheap too. Yes. Yes. If you think about, you know, a Costco membership, Costco membership is yearly. This is a one-time share. If you're sitting on the fence... Now is the time to buy because it will help the co-op open much earlier. Are the, are the fees going to go up once it's opened? No, it's a one-time share. No, but I mean, if you buy now, do you get a better deal than if you buy after it's open or two years no, from now? No, we can't do that. According can't to the raise co-op, the prices of no, the shares? According to the co-op, you got to increase the prices in. of the share now then. <laughs> you got 200 people that have already bought into this? Yes. At 120 bucks for a one-time shot? Yeah. It doesn't seem like enough. How are you guys going to survive? Well, Are you sure you'll be able to survive? We are going to sell preferred shares in a couple of months. At one in five thousand dollars, so okay. we'll be seeking other investments. So we oh, okay. there's a there's a whole strategy to raise the capital right. of the store. Um, the budget is close to a million dollars. We've got a lot of capital to raise, but we do have people lined up that are waiting to for us to launch the uh, preferred sharing pain campaign, and they're going to invest. So we're feeling hopeful. We're feeling positive. We've got a lot of people excited about it who want to invest. Um, so if you want to buy a membership, go online. You can also uh, visit our office. It's at 10 Duke Street near Montebello Park. Nice. You can drop in and with a check. You can call me, 905-650-4076, and I can make arrangements uh, for anyone to pay. So, Wow. Thank you. Thank you so much. Gary was- Porter, well done. I'm really glad I had you in. And uh, like I said, I could probably spend an hour with you. We'll touch base with you in a few months. Get yes. you in when we got a little bit more time, give you a couple segments. But I appreciate your time on Mother's Day. Have a great one. Thank you. I'd love to come All right. back. All right.
Gail Haynes is next. She's on the phone. Lemonade Stand Millionaires, the book, How to Talk to Your Children About Money. Gail Haynes, we'll have a quick segment with her coming up. And then Gail D. and Dooley Noted. Well, they're playing the bumpers in and out, but we're going to talk to them in the last segment right here on the Jim Fannin Show on 610 CKTB. I heard there was a secret chord that David played, and it pleased the Lord, but you don't really care. Music, do ya? Well, it goes like this the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall, and the major lift. A baffled king composing hallelujah. This is the Jim Fannin Show on Niagara's News Talk 610. Call now, 905-688-2582, 1-877-610-2582, or text us at 61010. It's not the pale moon that excites me, that thrills and delights me, oh no, 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 it's just the near. Just the nearness of you when I'm in Who's your do dootin' a dootin' 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 back there? Seriously, you guys are awesome. So close to me. All my <laughs> That's beautiful. Happy Mother's Day to you. I am Jim Fannin. That's Gail D and Dooley Noted playing live bumpers on the way in and out of the show today. In and out of commercial breaks. Gail Haynes is my next guest on the phone with me. Gail, I really appreciate the time. Happy Mother's Day. Thanks for taking time out of your Sunday to call in. Thank you, and happy Mother's Day to all the mothers mothers that are out there listening. Yeah, now tell me I don't tell me a little bit about the concept of your book. When I say we're going to talk to our, our kids about money, that's something that's been really taboo. At least it wasn't my family. I didn't get any budgeting advice from my mother. Well, and I think that's, uh, if you look at the way that our society is working right now, there's a, so many people haven't had that conversation with about money early enough, and it really has got us caught into a, a debt society. So if we start talking to our kids early about great money habits where they can learn about saving, they can lear- learn about saving up for, you know, something that they want, learning about how to spend their money and have fun with it, uh, learning about putting money aside for education, And one of the other big things about money is that kids need to understand that the money is also understanding how to give money uh, and and think about things other than just themselves and and that money is not just for spending. (laughs) Okay, so that's all well and good. That sounds good to me. But what are the strategies? How, How do you put it in to practical application? Well, we do something really fun with the kids that in our home is we start with jars. And so our kids have five jars and they literally have, they've, they've decorated them. Um, and each of those jars, when they get money in for their birthday or if they get money for Christmas or if, let's say, they have weekly chores that they do and they get paid for those or little side jobs, all of that money gets divided up into the jars and they know what each one of them is for. So let's say our play jar is a jar where... They 20% of whatever money comes in goes there, and they get to do whatever they want, um, you know, with, that's, that's appropriate for kids, that uh, where I don't have, I don't look at them and, and say, well, you can't buy that, you can't spend that. I, it's really about them starting to learn what to do with money and, and make their own choices. And, uh, and then the angel jars, usually 5 or 10% of their money goes there, so they start to look for charities and different things like that. So by letting kids understand and start playing with the concept, concept of all of these different things that you can do with money, they start to uh, get those habits set so that as they start making more money, those things continue, that the concept of saving up for a big purchase that they want to make. So the name of the jars, again, is the play jar, where you don't have any discretion on as long as it's kid-friendly. Then the angel jar is a charity jar, I get that. Uh, Then you've got what, save, put away for a rainy day, is that one? 
their savings jar, which okay. is for any big things that they're saving up for. So that's for. three. Um, they have their wealth jar, and the wealth jar is money that they'll put aside and that the parents will help them invest uh, however oh. that family sees fit. And then there is um, their education jar. So that you can use for books or for their future education. Well, you're not own- making the kids save for their own university degree, are you? No, no. You know what? My daughter, I mean, I think it's good for them to have a little bit of that money in there for their future education. But No, absolutely. I'm, I'm saying a little bit in jest, so, but that's uh, yeah. great. Now, why? what led you to write the book? Uh, I really, my kids were two and four when I became a single mom. I actually was an entrepreneur when I was 16, and so hard work has never been um, a surprise to me or, or unusual for me, but I didn't understand money very well. And when I became a single parent, it was uh, unfortunately brutally um, obvious and ended up in a real financial um, trouble. And I decided that I just never wanted my kids to go through that, and I knew that had I know, known differently, it had I had different habits when I was growing, I wouldn't have experienced that financial problems that I did. Now, tell me a little bit about how do you come to a point, and this isn't natural for most parents, I don't think, where you, where you can say to your kids, listen, I screwed up. I failed. I was on the wrong road, and now I know the difference. Here's the right road. It was it difficult for you to say, you know what? I was in a bad place. I, I didn't know how to manage my money. I failed at managing money to your own children. You know what? It, it is and it isn't. I think that it's so important for parents to really have that candid honesty for their kids to let them know when they've made a mistake, to apologize when they've done something wrong, if they've if they snapped at their children, to, to come back and say, you know what, I'm really sorry, I, that was, I shouldn't have done that. And um, so I think it's, one, it's just an important thing to show our children that we do make mistakes so that when they make mistakes, they don't feel so bad about it because they understand it's kind of human. You apologize, you recognize it, and you move forward. Gail Haynes is my guest. She is the author of Lemonade Stand Millionaire. Gail, I really appreciate your time. Just on the way out, I'm going to get to meet you on Monday at Mo Mondays. It's something that I find so fascinating. you got a couple other gigs coming up, but uh, Mo Mondays is one of them. How do people get a hold of you, and what other speaking gigs do you have planned? They can find me at the Lemonade Stand Millionaire dot com. Uh, we've got a Facebook page as well that they can find us, the Lemonade Stand Millionaire. Uh, I've actually this the things that are coming up. I've got some courses that are coming up, some one day workshops for kids, but also for parents. And I've got some workshops uh, coming up for summer camp. So it's a five day camp on kids learning about money, where there it's going to be extremely interactive and and a lot of fun. Now, do you have an existing connection to Niagara? I actually, my youngest daughter lives in Niagara, and um, so she lives right out in the Niagara on the Lake area. So that's that's my main connection for out there. Nicely done, Gail. I really appreciate you coming in. You know what? I'll get you in. I'm promising this to everyone today. It's a fast-moving show. I'll get you in when we get a couple more segments to spend with you because we just had a barely enough time to scratch the surface today. But just on the way out, uh, how we buy the book and any ways that we need to get a hold of you. You can uh, email me at gail at the Lemonade Stand Millionaire. Uh, actually, sorry, gail at Lemonade Stand Millionaire. The book is available on our website. You can get it at Amazon, Chapters, uh, all of those places. Gail Haynes, I really appreciate it. Thank you, and have a great Mother's Day. Thank you, too. Have a great day. All right, you, too. I hope you're doing something really cool with it. All of you out there, give your mom a big hug and tell you you love her. Up next... This is sometimes the favorite part of my show. I call them rock stars, jazz stars, whatever. Gail D and Duly Noted, they're going to play this bumper, then another one when we come back, then they're going to race around into my studio and sit down and talk about what they've got coming up in the community. Gail D with Duly Noted right after this on the Jim Fannin Show on 610 CKTV. What are you made of? What are you so afraid of? Could it be three simple words? Or the fear of being overheard? What's wrong? Let her in on your secret heart. Secret heart. Why so much?
This is the Jim Fannin Show on Niagara's News Talk 610. Call now, 905-688-2582, 1-877-610-2582, or text us at 61010. better blues when you got nothing left to lose in tears you shut the door I'm sleeping on the floor ain't more better blues hey more better blues you got nothing left Crushed my very core, can't take it anymore. Ain't no better blue. Welcome back. I am Jim Fannin. Happy Mother's Day to you. That is Gail D with Duly Noted. Gail Davidson. Jim Slominski. I nailed it. (laughs) So difficult getting the guest names right. Sometimes with the mic goes on, your brain turns to mush. Aaron Zukowicz. Listen, look at how easy that was. Duly noted, thank you very much for coming in. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. I gotta echo what Andy Petrowski said when he called in. He said, you know what? If you're strained from your mother, then call her up. Give her a hug. Call her up. Life's too short, man. Suck it up. So Dooley Noted has made their way into the booth here. This is just how they do it. The rock stars roll in like they own the place. Right after, we make them play the last bumper. We give the mics back to Drew. I don't like it when I can't talk to my producer. I can't bring my producer on the air because you guys are hogging the microphones over there. Drew, thank you very much, brother. You're welcome. The host of... Nerd Play. Nerd Play. It's a geek time or geek week or whatever. <laughs> you close. Week. You were dying. I see you, you wanted to get on the mic so I know, bad. I to correct you. Nerd Play. Nerd Play, <laughs> you dumbass. <laughs> Drew coming for running the board and micing you guys up today. Gail, thank you so much. Hi, Jim. It's a small world. We have another connection. We'll get into that later. We but tell do. me a little bit about who you are and how did you come to a place like this? Well, Jim, first of all, I just want to say thank you so much Jim Fannin, for having us on the Jim Fannin Show here at the White House of Talk, CKTV. Oh, I owe it all to you guys. The rock stars make my show. We I'm just love a, it. This is just awesome. Just the host. We're so happy to be here. Oh, so you're we just want to thank you, first of all. And we want to wish everybody a happy Mother's Day. All the mothers a happy Mother's Day, of course. Yeah, great. <laughs> so, yeah, Aaron and, and uh, Jim and I have been together for about three years. And uh, we've all played music for much longer than that. Um, But together, collectively, we've been together for three years. So we've uh, formed a a group, Gail D, with Duly Noted. And uh, we do jazz, um, pop tunes, all kinds of uh, jazz songs with the twist, um, you know, throughout the Niagara region. Good. Now, Jim, what's your background? Where do you, what's your musical background? Where do you oh, come from? Um, I'm from uh, Montreal originally. Oh, and, sorry to hear that, too. I yeah. see that for, for the people from Welland and Thorough, but Montreal, beautiful town, nice place yeah. to visit. No, you grew up there? Yeah, I grew up there, and uh, I started out... Now, I don't hear uh, a French accent. Uh, no, I'm from... Now, Jim's uh, on the bass. Yeah. Yep. No, you don't have to call that a floor bass. It's a bass guitar or uh, a bass, right? Uh, it's a double bass. A double bass. Double okay. Bass, yeah. See? Yeah. Well, there's a lot of names. Doghouse bass, bass file. Uh, I love bass. it, man. Yeah. That is a sexy yeah. instrument right yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Now, does that does it mean the same thing for guys that drive really big trucks? <laughs> <laughs> No, no. no, quite possibly. <laughs> I don't know. I won't so, you. Montreal, when did you come to Niagara? Uh, about 25 years ago. Okay, yeah, so, so you're a native yeah, now. You've been yeah, here a long yeah, time. Yeah, that's right. I can say I'm And who have you here. hung around with, who you've played with? Um, I've played in various uh, classic rock bands, actually. I've only picked up the string bass uh, in the last, well, since I met uh, Classic Aaron. rock, meaning yeah. you play bass guitar? Yeah, I play that's bass your, guitar. That's your natural instrument? Uh, no, actually, the string bass is what I started okay. on. Okay, yeah. And, uh, but when I moved down here, uh, the friends I met were were all uh, like sort of rock musicians. It's a you know it's a it's an area that's got. Did a you lot have of any guys, significant so. bands, guys that we would know? Uh, no, no, we okay. just played small places. All right, yeah. on to the next guy then. Aaron, thank <laughs> you for coming in. Where are you from? What's your background? What brings you here? Uh, well, I'm from Beamsville. I grew up in uh, Niagara. So Beamsville. I got a lot of time for guys from Beamsville. <laughs> <There we laughs> I'm go. just kidding. I had to say something good today. Uh, and wh- how old are you? Where you, you know, did you grow uh, up in Beansville? Twenty six. Yeah, most you said, well, of my you life. You guys has... got a young stud on your crew. Yeah. He's our baby. Yeah. yeah. Now, are you the salesperson for the show? 
salesperson. No, well, I think, you, uh, you must be the guy that understands social media better than anyone here, okay. no? Well, you'd be surprised. Yeah. Jim is our IT guy. So well, I know Gail doesn't. He, uh, she's no slouch at it for sure. That's yeah. right. And Jim, you, you got some background in <laughs> IT? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so Duly sure. Noted's been together for three years. Tell me, you get anything special coming up as far as gigs? Where can we catch you? We do. Uh, we play locally all through the Niagara region, and there's tons of places that are supporting live music and jazz, uh, Jim. It's just great. We've uh, started out with the Cafe on Main in Font Hill. Patty Fagan, shout out to Patty for supporting live music. Nicely and done. we've yeah. built, um, you know, our fans and, and our base there in Font Hill, uh, which has been a great, great place for us to start. And we've moved on, you know, Councilman Wineries, we've been playing all over the region um shout out to you know all the places that do councilman support. winery you guys ever invite jacob bergsman up on stage to rap with you guys no we he works know. down there my son I, the hurricane oh really yeah, he works oh, at councilman oh my goodness. Oh, yeah. we'll no, to, no one at councilman yeah. actually knows he works there he just uh, collects a check uh, i think we'll but check him out. Yeah. yeah we're at councilman now, do you guys ever often. mix up the genres do you ever get into or you just strictly do your jazz and that's it we do jazz but we also do uh pop tunes in a jazz style so it's you know okay. it's very versatile what we do we even do like modern, like we do a Bruno Mars tune, for instance. You know really? what I mean? Okay. So we do all types of, of things. Now, you must be affordable if you're doing private parties and little gigs like that. Yeah, you can check out our, our website to see our calendar and our pricing and contact okay, us. Uh, www.dulynoted.ca, and that's okay. D-U-A-L-L-Y noted.ca. Mm-hmm. Um, you can get in touch with uh, Jim Slominski, Aaron Zukovich, or myself, Gail Davidson, and we'd love to, you know... Find out what we can do for your parties or your events. Um, we're also doing an event. We want to shout out to one of your radio uh, friends, okay. uh, Eric Thomas. Okay. So I think Raceline Radio. Raceline Radio. What that so, guy has. Eric, you know, like, I mean, <laughs> some guys have radio voices, some guys not so much. Eric Thomas. Isn't it his, awesome? I, know, I mean, his he is, is so perfect for yeah. Raceline Radio. And he's he's, he's a, a local guy, too. He is. He's a fellow musician. They. Eric and his family, Janice and their daughter, Caitlin, and uh, their soon-to-be son, son-in-law, son uh, Blake, have supported us since the beginning for three years. They they love us, and uh, we love them, and they're like one of our biggest fans, so we... We're just excited that you know, no, we have one of your comrades up. that uh, supports us. I'm you know? Merrick Thomas from Raceline Radio. <laughs> no, that's not very good. i got to practice a few times. Oh, it's my first time. He's got a great voice. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah. So lots of stuff coming up around. Are you playing Jazz Festival as yep. well? Well, we're, all, we're at the Cafe on Main on June the 12th. That's our next um, upcoming gig. We've also got lots of private gigs on the go. And these are based on... on fans that have supported us and grown with us and they've heard us playing and then they've booked us for their private events you know okay which is awesome so uh yeah and uh as as a duo aaron and i play every saturday night at the host mm-hmm. pub and grill that's right? where i saw you yeah. in the patio at the host yeah, that's right yeah. all right okay. I, th- I, know, yeah. I know that guy oh i don't know that guy i know that bass that's why i recognize, <laughs> yeah, that's I recognize right. the bass I, I could just leave it in i know that bass right. anywhere <laughs> Yeah. So the host, that's where yeah, I've seen you. That's right. right. And sometimes Gail comes by and sits in and sings a so couple of So when's that gig start for you guys? Um, it's uh, from 6 to 9.30. And every, You're already started Saturday, it? Oh, yeah, yeah every yes. Saturday. We've been playing there for years. You played through the winter and everything? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay. It's a long-standing that. gig, and it's nice. uh, Niagara's best-kept secret, and now so hopefully what you're it's in not there? any longer. <laughs> what you were in there? You know John, the owner, or something? Who, who was your connection? How'd you get into the host? Just, I knew the former pianist that was playing there. He moved, I think, to Texas, so, so you guys just friend inherited friend, it. friend, yeah. I got in and brought Jim with me. Nicely done. <laughs> yeah. Guys, thank you very much. Oh, you're so welcome. Gail thank Davidson, you. Jim Slominski. Yes. Right. Now, if I could just say it really, really <laughs> smoothly, it'd be better. Aaron Zukowicz, I really appreciate your time coming in on a Sunday. I know it's probably, well, it's not your day off today. you got another gig coming up today, yeah, don't I you? Do, Is yes. it a private party? Um, no, it's at the uh, Savory and Sweet. It's a little uh, local right. restaurant in Chippewa that's uh, supporting live music as well and jazz. So I'll be there tonight. So, uh, yeah, for sure. Stop in. Go check out Gail Davis and jump in here. Just a Mother's Day shout out to uh, Barbara and Grandma. That's it. Aww. That's it. Thanks, no, guys. I you're love great. you. No. You know, you're the wind beneath my wings. Well, Thank they, you for creating me. You know, I don't know. They know that. But yeah. uh, it's that was all for true. my mother, Aaron. That was for my mother. Aww. Mom, I love you. I miss you. Back next week, Drew. You couldn't have picked a better song to go out on Lust for Life. Drew Comerford, running the board. I am Jim Fanner. We'll catch you next week at noon. I am out.